assaulted, attacked by Antifa, attacked by Satanists, doxxed with my information online, death threats come to my house every week. I, I, I know what it's like, but I feel like tonight what's going to sustain us in the days to come is a baptism of hope. Because we are not just angry conservatives. Like people expect me to just be like, you know, coming to Canada. Arr. No, no, I'm coming to Canada. I'm like stoked for what God's doing. And, and I, well, here's what I'm so excited about. It's like Psalms chapter two. The enemies of God plot. They scheme. I know they're doing what they do. I want to know what God's position is. He who sits in the heavens laughs. Amen. The enemy is pathetic. And everything he tried to do in the last season to shut down the voice of the church, it's all coming back. Prodigal sons and daughters are coming back. Miracles are coming back. Healing's coming back. Worship through the streets of Canada. Yeah. But the Lord gave me this verse. We don't we don't have cookie cutter sermons. We just tune into God, Lord. What are you saying over a city and a nation? And this is what the Lord told me. Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. What causes us to be the bold and courageous people of God? Well, it's this. We have a great hope. Not we're angry, we're upset, we're frustrated. Some of that may be true. However, our pr primary motivation for being a people of boldness, it's like Acts chapter 2. What happened when they were in the upper room? The power of God came. What happened because of that bold proclamation of the gospel? The rulers and the authorities came to Peter and Paul. They said, hey, you can't do this. And they smiled at them and said, too bad. We're going to do it. Yeah. We don't obey you. We obey God. But they did it with so much hope. And they got in trouble. And they got persecuted. And they got thrown in prison. And God got them out of prison. Then they got together and they had another prayer meeting. And they said, God, make us more bold so we can get in more trouble. See, the Lord is raising up a bold church in Canada. Yeah. Come on. But the reason that you are bold is because you have such a hope. The world doesn't have a hope. The world's lost all hope. No political solutions. No economic solutions. There's no hope. You are the ones with hope. Amen. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And so tonight, my prayer is that as we're gathered here, we're not finished. We're going to do ministry. We're going to press into more of God. He has a lot in store for us tonight. But our heart posture is God. We want to be bold because we have such a hope. We want to be the people of God. And I'll just tell you, listen. 2020 was just a trial run. I know some of you are like, oh Lord. Like, we've already been told they're planning the next one. We know it's going to happen. Whatever. Who cares? Amen. It's very simple. If you didn't respond like you had hoped in the last season, repent, get free, and let's roll, baby. Yeah. Woo. Tonight, Freedom. no shame. I want somebody to say no shame. There's no shame on this field. This is a shame-free zone. We are getting free tonight. Yeah. We're getting free of addictions. We're getting free of fear. We're getting free of hopelessness. We're getting free of discouragement. We are getting free. And we're getting launched into joy. And we're getting launched into hope. Amen.